Welcome, everyone. It's good to be with you this sunny Sunday morning. At least it's sunny up here in King Carden. Uh, it's good to be with you all digitally, although, as you well know, your pictures are pasted to the pews, and uh, so that that way it reminds me that so many of you, while digitally connected, are also here in my heart. I'd also like to uh, uh, share with you this cartoon shows the empty tomb for sale single owner only only used three days still has that new tomb smell reason for sale resident resurrected so in order to celebrate easter how can you keep from singing we need volunteers to augment our worship by singing during the live streaming video service so if you wish to volunteer contact david hamilton our music minister by calling the church office and he'll schedule you in now um there is a certain someone who is with us here no yes <laughs> liz didn't know i was going to do this and that was deliberate happy birthday liz i know it's not today friday. it was friday yes and i'm not saying which one either because <laughs> i don't know 29. oh wow well. anyhow unlike moses Liz is not going to get a birthday cake with a burning bush on it. But we certainly hope that your birthday lights up the world as you light up our world. So thank you very much, Liz. That was just a subtle way of saying thank you to Liz because there are so many who make this uh, service pull together. David Hamilton, who leads us so uh, skillfully and uh, wonderfully from the organ bench. David Skinner, who is unfortunately sick this morning, so couldn't be here, but also there's Liz Coates in her newly minted uh, uh, post-birthday <laughs> manner. Uh, Sarah McKenzie, who put the slideshow together. Jim and Judy Zerubic, who faithfully are ensconced up in the balcony and making sure the technology works well. Stu Metzger, who takes care of our facility. John Phillips and Liz Dillman, who take care of the finances. And Liz Dillman, who's also helping with the uh, worship leadership this morning. So thank you to everyone for that. Um, we use the screens, obviously, or we wouldn't be live streaming. Whenever you see red print in bold, it's for the worship leader to read, in this case, myself or Liz, depending. And black print in bold is for everyone to read together, which is uh, led by Judy Zerubic from her lofty perch in the balcony. 
So let's practice that as we acknowledge the territory on which we are privileged to gather. We gather for worship. As we gather for worship, we acknowledge that we are gathered on the traditional territory of First Nations people, peoples who have lived on this land and by these waters for thousands of years. We gather as a non-Indigenous community of faith on the traditional territory of the Saugeen Ojibwe Nation, giving gratitude for their stewardship through the ages. We are newcomers to this land, and we have gained so much in coming. Our gain, however, has come at a great cost to First Nations people. We acknowledge that we have gained much within racist systems of our creation, systems which have benefited those who are white, Christian, and heterosexual. Our acknowledgement is only the beginning of our journey toward reconciliation toward healing of all our relations with those we have belittled in this culture. Our words must now be followed up with action. We pray the Holy Spirit breathes forgiveness, hope, and love into all our relations and sets us free from the evil of colonization. There are a few announcements that I would like to highlight for you this morning. First of all, there's a couple of announcements about the United Church Women, the UCW. There's an April Zoom meeting on this Monday, tomorrow at 7 o'clock. All women in the congregation are invited. And the Zoom meeting link is in the announcements document posted on our website. As well, the Western Ontario Waterways Regional UCW Annual General Meeting is being held on Saturday, April 24th this year. Now, this is different than what I just told you about. This is the regional gathering of United Church Women. The le worship leadership will be provided by the Reverend Robin Magali. And to register to receive a link for this virtual Zoom meeting, there is the email address there, or you can phone Kim. And all of that is on the announcements on our webpage as well. I'd also like to share some sad news. Dave Leaning died on Wednesday, April the 7th. Dave was a longtime member of the tech crew and son of our own Joan Leaning. Please keep his wife Karen, his children, and his grandchildren in your prayers as they walk the difficult pathway of grief. As well, my beard is getting ever longer, ever more scraggly, ever more frustrating to look at in the mirror. <laughs> I don't know how I bore it 20, uh, uh, those long years ago in my early 20s when it was down on my chest. Nevertheless, will I shave or will I grow it even longer? You get to decide what I do with my beard. Donate to the choice you wish me to follow, uh, whether it's shave or grow. And uh, whichever side gets the most, the combination of the most money, for the general fund and volunteer time and i'll tell you how many points you get when you let me know for what you might like to volunteer new and uh, here are some examples of that and here's some more examples the deadline is april the 25th next sunday and we'll find out what happens and whether I'm going to grow or if I'm going to shave. We shall see. Anyway, let's have fun as we do this. As well, the love of money is the root of all evil. Is that the whole treasurer's report? Don't worry, there is a job description for the treasurer. And due to Liz Dillman's retirement as treasurer, we are accepting applications for treasurer. And uh, the deadline for applications will be this Friday, April the 23rd. So please send resumes to Greg McClellan by email. His email is in the announcements on our webpage, but uh, that's it right there on the screen. As well, if you want to watch recent services, uh, not just this one, but others, you can find them on our YouTube channel. Just uh, put uh, Kincardine United Church Ontario in the YouTube search engine. Services also continue to air on Rogers Cable 6 a week later, so if you're seeing this on Rogers Cable 6, it's going to be April the 25th. 
And you can also view some past services online at Roger's uh, website, and no cable TV is necessary to do that. As well, we continue having fireside chats every Tuesday. Those two are posted to our YouTube channel. And as the church has done for millennia, I greet you. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. And I would invite you to share that peace with whomever is in the room with you, no matter how weird that feels, uh, or to think about those in your heart and your mind who you would like to share peace with and do that now. As we recognize the presence of God amongst us, within us, and around us, let us prepare ourselves for worship. The light of Christ shines among us and shows us the path to follow as children of God. May it always be so. Let's join together in the call to worship and prayer of approach that you'll find on your screen. New life, new possibilities, new challenges come at the risen Christ's invitation to embrace our journey of becoming. New challenges for sure because we are told to stay home once again. New possibilities seem to wash away in a flood of familiar monotony. Come then into this digital space, separate but together, to cultivate fragile shoots of new life from the seeds of faith we plant. We come ever hopeful, even in our uncertainty that the good news in this Easter season transforms and renews us all. Come, as we open our souls to God's touch in prayer. God who adopts us and loves us beyond measure, open the paddocks of our hearts that we may rediscover love's power. Cultivate within us the fruits of the spirit which enliven our living. Restore us by your nurturing presence to reach out to heal and to be healed, sowing relationships that grow and flourish in Jesus' name. Amen. Join together in our first hymn, hymn number 345, that you'll see the words, For come children, join to sing.
hard for us to grasp the presence of God's blessing of grace. After all, we have sayings like this, you get what you pay for. Scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. In today's world, we think of relationships like uh, transactions. Therefore, it must be the same between God and us. However, here is the gift of grace revealed in Jesus' resurrection. Grace is the necklace of consistent moments of unearned love, a river rapid with moments of unconditional forgiveness, the steady heartbeat of moments of unmerited consolation. The gift of grace is not a transaction. It is God's self-giving love. As the depth, breadth, and height of God's gift of grace sinks into our understanding, recognizing God's revealed love as our invitation to transformative relationships, we open our hearts and souls to commune with God in prayer. Amen. One of my favorite uh, songs to hear sometimes is Aretha Franklin's uh, song, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, -E Respect. And the whole idea is that as we grow into adulthood, we learn to respect one another, even when we disagree with each other, even when our worldviews are completely different, or even sometimes more troublingly, marginally different. We learn and find ways of rebuilding relationships. So when you rebuild a relationship, if something is broken, this is something that I did as a Boy Scout. We go out into the woods and, and we would find sticks and, and, and figure out how to use them as a splint. For example, in this one, if you break your forearm, how then would you stabilize it so that you can get out of the bush safely? This was emergency. It looks a little rude, but it, it, it's exactly what you need. You mend the brokenness by fastening your arm to something that is straight and true. On the other hand, there's a stick, a single stick. If you were to take that in your hand, it would be so easy to break because the stick is all by itself. Take a look at what would happen. When you break something like that, this is known as a green splint fracture when you're talking to doctors. It's often common in children because their bones are so pliable, they don't have a clean break. And to mend something like that takes time, takes diligence takes expertise and a lot of loving care. But believe me, it's worth it. And then, what if we all gather together, each of us as individual twigs, when we are gathered together, I would dare you to try and break that bundle of sticks with your hand. You couldn't do it by yourself. And that's the point. When there's a brokenness in relationships, we work at making sure that we work together. What we do is that we find that in our own individual twigginess, if you will, that we are vulnerable, weak. But when we gather together to support one another, we become stronger. And in the gathering together, we grow into an adult relationship, one with each other, that mends relationships even when there's friction. I pray that it may be so. And as we pray, let's join together in the prayer that Jesus gave us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our responsive reading this morning is from Psalm 4, it's Voices United 727, and the refrain is from Voices United 411. David will play the refrain for us, and uh, then we will begin. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause, for you set me free when I was in distress. Be gracious to me now and hear my prayer. people will you defame my honor how long will you love what is worthless and seek lies know this that god has chosen the faithful god hears me when i call stand in awe and cease from sin commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still offer the sacrifices that are appointed and put your trust in god Are many who say oh that we might see prosperity lift up the light of your face on us O god but you have put gladness in my heart more than those whose grain and wine are plentiful safe and sound i live down and sleep for you alone god made me dwell in safety mm. oh, god. Let us now join together in singing the hymn, Dance with the Spirit, Voices United 156.
Bible reading this morning is taken from John 3, verses 1 to 7, and it's from the paraphrase, The Message. What marvelous love the Father has extended to us. Just look at it. We're called children of God. That's who we really are. But that's also why the world doesn't recognize us or take us seriously because he has, it has no idea who he is or what he's up to. But friends, that's exactly who we are, children of God, and that's only the beginning. Who knows how we'll end up? What we know is that when Christ is openly revealed, we'll see him, and in seeing him, become like him. All of us who look forward to his coming stay ready, with the glistening of purity of Jesus' life as a model for our own. All who indulge in sinful life are dangerously lawless, for sin is a major disruption of God's order. Surely you know that Christ showed up in order to get rid of sin. There is no sin in him, and sin is not part of his program. No one who lives deeply in Christ makes a practice of sin. None of those who do practice sin have taken a good look at Christ. They've got him all backward. So my dear children, don't let anyone divert you from the truth. It's the person who acts right, who is right, just as we see it lived out in our righteous Messiah. Those who make a practice of sin are straight from the devil, the pioneer in the practice of sin. The Son of God entered the scene to abolish the devil's ways. Let us join together in prayer. Loving God, into this space, this timeless and boundless space for which you create us, may we live into Christ's being. May we connect with the mystery of Christ, the risen, resurrected new life of transformation to which you call us, that we may follow in Christ's way. Amen. I have a rather singular memory from the second week of my grade four class when I was all of whatever that was, nine years old, I guess. Now, <clears throat> back in those days, we had inkwells. And grade four was the very first year we got to use pens instead of pencils. And we got our blotters, which I would actually eat. <laughs> Who knows why? I don't remember why. Uh, but the girl in front of me, who just lived two doors over from my place on our cul-de-sac, and whom I had a real crush on, had pigtails. And yes, you guessed it. I would gently and quietly unscrew the top of the bottle of ink and take her pigtail and dip a little bit of the bottom into the ink and then the other one without her even knowing. Screw the top of the bottle on so the teacher wouldn't know and then sit back and wait for the reaction when the ink got all over her clothes. I thought I was hilarious. My kids would probably tell you that I still think I'm hilarious <laughs> and I haven't really grown up from that, but 
despite what my intent was, was, which was actually to get her attention and hope that, that she'd be my girlfriend, uh, it was sin. Sin, in my mind, is a definition of broken relationships, both between one another and also between God and ourselves. It takes time to learn how to walk in relationships so that you don't, despite your best intentions, break those relationships and therefore sin. It does take time. It takes patience. It takes listening. And yet, when I read the psalm that we read this morning that uh, Liz led for us, here's what I get the impression of. The psalmist is doing this. Hey, God, pay attention. It's little old me here. Um, I've got a bit of a bone to pick with you because life isn't so great right now. Things are crumbling and, and uh, uh, things are not the way they were supposed to be. I thought that we were your chosen people and yet we're not exactly enjoying life. Things aren't perfect, you know, and they're supposed to be perfect. Well, I thought that that's what you promised us. So come on, God, rescue us. Come and save us. Save us from ourselves because you said you would. You loved us. Come on, Daddy. Save us, please. Except <laughs> it doesn't recognize that God doesn't save us from ourselves. God, if we listen, gives us instruction, guidance, compassion, and a pathway to follow, which moves toward healing of relationships. Very similar to what our First Nations neighbors would say when they say all our relations. They think of all of creation, including each of us and everything in creation, as a relationship, something we need to foster, to strengthen, to work at. And the psalmist, meanwhile, is saying, no, 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 rescue us. That's why we sang the refrain, oh God, we call. From deep inside we yearn, just rescue us from the stupid decisions we make, whether it's dipping pigtails into ink or whether it's failing to mask when we should, whatever. Yet, the Easter experience changes how we as God, God's children, embrace new life. It changes because it turns the world upside down. It, it transforms our perception of what is right and good. It, it's not about who gets the most wins the, the prize. It's about relationship. It's frankly about maturity, about rising into adulthood. So, Richard Rohr, who is a Franciscan uh, Roman Catholic priest and theologian, has some interesting things to say about what he calls the cosmic Christ, but also the mystery of Christ. First, we're not trying to be rebels anymore, he writes. We're not trying to be reactionary or heretics. We're just trying to be honest about our experience. And that honesty is about the experience of the risen Christ, similar to what Paul was trying to write in his letter, is he experienced the risen Christ on the road to Damascus, and it totally turned his world upside down. We are living inside this incarnation. And what, what uh, uh, Richard Rohr is trying to say by this is that the incarnation of Christ is not just and singularly in, the, in Jesus, but it is something that we can learn from and become over time. Richard also writes, we can't fall in love with concepts, energies, ideas, and forces. We're not going to give your life to a force. As 1 John says, we need someone we can see and, and, and touch and look into his or her eyes and relate to. Persons love persons. 
That pulls our soul out of itself. So the incarnation in Jesus is not just observed, but experienced. So it's a relationship with God through the revelation of Christ that shows us how to live a different life. The question is, do you like the Christ mystery? Now, Richard says, I can see your answer to that in the way you walk down the street and the way you respect the person at the checkout counter. Consider, if you will, that very phrase, how you respect the person at the checkout counter, considering that all of us, even in the stay at home that's newly been brought down with all the new restrictions from the province, we still go shopping for groceries, whether in the corner store or at the grocery store or wherever. And all of those workers are risking their very lives for us. I can't imagine how much possible exposure they have to endure each day. So we now have to be honest that our experience is making us ready for an adult Christianity, for an adult notion of what's really happening without throwing out Jesus. You'll go back and fall in love with Jesus more than ever before, but now you'll recognize that this Jesus is not just the savior of my soul, but he's the naming of the very direction of history, the alpha and the omega, meaning the beginning and the end, the entirety of all creation. This perfected humanity that he reveals in one moment of time and where we are all being seduced toward. That Christ mystery is essential to the reality of our faith walk. In the living Christ, we see the evolution of maturity, the, the becoming of the mystery of Christ that shows us that it is possible for any one of us because Jesus was fully human as we are. And Jesus, like we do, stumbled and ran into things that he hadn't anticipated and had to adjust. Why? Because of his relationship with those around him and with his relationship in God. That was his guide. Those were the whispers to his soul that showed where he needed to go. If we look at the letter that Paul wrote, we notice that Paul too talks about sin, but he puts a different spin on it. He's saying, yes, we have broken relationships in our lives all the time, but here's the deal, folks. We are God's children. Just as Jesus was son of God, so are we children of God, and we are part of this becoming that the risen Christ shows us this becoming means that when we go into the world it's not just about what we say it's easy to say a whole bunch of stuff and and we might even mean it we might have the best intentions in our hearts but the trouble is if our actions don't match our words there will be brokenness there will be sin and yet what paul says to the church is that we need to act as if we are God's children. So how do we do that? If we're going to act as God's children, let me, let me tell you a story. It, was, it comes from Danielle Coleman, who wrote in her book, Emotional Intelligence, about the power of relationships. So here's part of what she wrote. Let me tell you about Govan Brown. Govan Brown was a bus driver in New York City. He drove a bus up Madison Avenue. I once rode on his bus, says Daniel. It was a very hot August day, very humid, and I was feeling a little irritable, like many people in New York City on a day like that. And when I got on his bus, Govan looked at me and asked, as though he really cared, how has your day been going? 
And I was shocked. Because you see, in New York City, people don't usually direct a human encounter like that with someone they've never seen before. They keep their distance. They keep a barrier. They ignore everything they possibly can and live in their own world. And as I sat on the bus, I realized he was carrying on a conversation with everyone on the bus. And people would get off the bus and he would say again very warmly, I hope your day turns out to be a wonderful day for you. At the time, I didn't know his name was Govan Brown. I found out that in his obituary in the New York Times years later, because they said he was the only driver of a bus in New York City who, when he retired, had a party held in his honor because he had so many fans. People couldn't wait to get on Govan Brown's bus. Now, it turns out that Govan was a pastor of a black church in Long Island, and he saw everyone on his bus as part of his flock. He was tending to his flock, which uh, Daniel writes was his feeling. And so it doesn't matter what you do, it's how you do it. That determines whether or not you really connect, whether or not you really help people, whether or not you truly live a relationship that's rooted in self-giving love. And it's challenging. Sometimes it's hard to see goodness. How many of you have seen the commercial on TV with the girl who is crying and her mascara is streaking down there on a bus and the little boy tries to hand her a chocolate bar to console her? She doesn't take it, but they've made a connection. And there's a little wry twerk of his lips as if to say, I get you and I care for you. And she makes a little smile that says, thank you. That's relationship that is modeled on the mystical Christ, on the risen Christ, on the cosmic Christ who can and does live within us. Once you make your connection with your flock, and I don't mean that you have to be a minister or a pastor or a priest or anything like that to have a flock. It's all about relationship. It's all about how you meet one another and how you live out your compassion. Compassion meaning with suffering. And also with joy. With life, relationships are mended and become adult, become mature. When we dare to risk our very selves in the midst of a broken world, and one little bit at a time, we splint the breaks and heal into wholeness. I pray that it may be so for all of us, both in the doing and in the receiving. Amen. Let's join together in prayer. We crawl into God's lap, snuggling closely, listening to the lub-dub of God's heart. Cheeks pressed to God's chest, we hear that slow, steady, dependable breathing in and out, in and out, in and out. We feel secure, safe, protected, loved. And so we are. But what of them? What of those of us feeling isolated, alone, and lonely? What of those of us feeling abandoned in the valley of the shadow of death, like the family of Dave leaning after his untimely passing? What of those of us buried deep within the inky dark pit of depression? What of those of us racked by illness or injury or disease, wondering in this pandemic third wave if the medical system will be there for us? 
What of those of us living in this land of plenty with too few resources of our own? Like laid off workers, like business owners who had to close down and stay home, like parents struggling to look after their kids while homeschooling, like healthcare workers exhausted and defeated by virulent variants, like frontline workers putting their lives at risk each day for us. What of those of us giving, giving, and giving of ourselves until nothing is left? What of those of us who cannot hear the heartbeat, the breathing of God? It hurts, and we despair, and we pray. Yet in the agony we feel, we rediscover our sharing and our connection. We are one body, united within the heart of God, within the breath of God, to each other and to those others who are also us. We embrace the loneliness. We breathe the abandonment. We dance to the dirge of depression. We hobble together in infirmity. We share starvation and destitution. We wonder and doubt in our worry. Yet, as we breathe, as we listen for God's heartbeat within us, it begins to heal. In our prayer-filled sharing, pain is lessened as we companion each other. We open our eyes to God's embrace, and we are now filled by one another. Those of us, all of us, are one in that embrace. In unison, we press our cheeks to the divine chest and listen with gratitude. Love dub, love dub, love dub, love dub. All to the familiar and comforting rise and fall of holy breath. And as we breathe, we open to God. We snuggle ever closer. Bodies pressed to bodies, all of us press lovingly to the one body. In God's embrace, we notice how we prayerfully embrace each other, stranger and friend, enemy and ally, marginalized and connected, one in Christ Jesus, one through prayer. Amen. Thank you. 
If COVID continues, where will we eat? The question tops the list of questions that Grant McKenzie, the communication director at Our Place Society, is fielding these days. Thanks to your gifts through mission and service, the answer continues to be right here. At Our Place in Victoria, BC, three square meals are delivered each day, rain or shine. The chefs are coming up with creative one bowl meal options and are taking to the streets themselves to ensure that people don't go hungry. Custodial teams are doubling efforts to keep the shelter safe. Paramedics have been added in the outreach team and are offering much needed medical care. Sleeping bags and emergency supplies are being distributed to those who need them most. This is just one example of how, by giving through mission and service, you are sharing the light of the risen Christ with those who are most vulnerable in Canada and around the world. As the pandemic continues, even with the growing numbers of vaccines given, more and more people need our help. In 2019, a quarter of the global population experienced hunger or did not have access to nutritious food. Think about that. That's one in four people. And now the UN states that because of the pandemic, that number has risen by 20%. Your mission and service gifts support people who rely on food banks, shelters, and emergency relief at home and abroad. Now more than ever, those of us who have enough to share need to do what we can to help. In this strange and difficult time, <clears throat> my heart breaks with sorrow at the vulnerable people struggling to survive with yet another obstacle in their path. But my heart also swells with pride at the people who are stepping up to help, says Mackenzie. By giving through mission and service, you are stepping up to help. Thank you. As well, all those who give to mission and service and those who give to our operating budget for Kincardine United Church, whether it's electronically or by sending checks in to the, the church or any number of the ways that are on our website, we are so grateful for the way you support the ministry of this congregation that makes a difference in the community. So let us take those gifts of time, of talent, and of treasure and ask to send them to God as dedication. Here we are, God, as your invited family, as people who beloved the risen Christ, as those who are worn, woven together as one by the Spirit's power. Take what we offer, our hearts, our living, our time, our talent, and our treasure. May you so bless what we give that we become transformed for love, a love which fosters good news for the broader fabric of this world. Amen. Let's join together in singing the final hymn, Lord Speak to Me.
to act as those who are children of the risen Christ. Go, as people who are gathered by the sender of love, upheld by the one who came in love, sent out in the power of love. Go in peace.